you're meeting with a series of people over uh, the next several months to talk about the environmental imperative and how it plays a role in every job or every place that people will live. And so we're talking today with Sally Moore. Sally is the executive officer of the uh, Masonry Works, which is the industry organization representing the masonry and brick and concrete and a whole bunch of other industries. So I just want to talk about it. Sally, you, you yourself are a, are a graduate of the post-secondary system of, in Ontario, and we're talking to alumni who are graduates potentially of Seneca College, but of other institutions as well, uh, with certificates, degrees, diplomas. So tell us a little bit about yourself and okay. your own background and where you grew up and went to school. Well, I grew up in Kingston, Ontario, and I have a diploma with distinction from St. Lawrence College in commercial communication. So that includes marketing, advertising, business executive, filmmaking. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And you actually got work that came out of that, right? Uh, I actually, it's been really good because one of the things one of our professors told us was that with this particular program, you would learn a lot about a lot of different things. And the idea was to get out in the business world and be able to connect with all those different mm -hmm. professions. Of course, at that time, there was no discussion about the environment. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, once I got out, I was able to do a lot of different things. And in the course of that, I've worked for the high-tech industry. Um, and then I worked, moved into a construction and building and worked for the Men Association for about 10 years where I did environmental programs. Today, we're standing in Royal Building Supplies. Yes. And they're one of the leading um, suppliers in, in the masonry industry. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about them and who they are? And let's... Um, Let's, let's make sure the, the public knows what a wonderful organization they are. Well, Royal is one of our long-standing members of Masonry Works, and they are suppliers of brick, block, and stone. So they work with a lot of our other members of Brampton Brick and Jazz Brick and Permacon, who supply them with brick, block, and stone. And they work uh, by supplying the brick, block, and stone, showing it to the customer, taking it to the uh, conferences, uh, and developing with the suppliers uh, new brick, block, and stone that will work for our individual customers. Well, this may seem like a stupid question, but then I, I love asking stupid questions. Behind us is a whole <laughs> series of, uh, of display items. What exactly is masonry? What, you know, for the, the, the uninitiated, what, what, how do you define it? How do you describe it? Uh, well, masonry is made of either brick, block, or stone. And uh, stone can also be made of concrete. So it comes, the, the stone comes from the quarries. Uh, uh, the quarries uh, are mined for various types of rock, which could go into a cement kiln, which is then made into cement powder. And the cement powder is made into concrete. The concrete is made into bricks. Mm. So anything that's brick block or stone, um, cinder blocks, for instance, uh, are also concrete blocks. They're interchangeable. And then you have clay brick as well. So mm -hmm. Uh, which is it's exactly like it sounds. It's made of uh, clay. They add uh, color additives. Uh, the, you can see a number of the samples here behind us mm -hmm. um, that have um, different types of colors, and uh, some of them are made to look like stone. So mm -hmm. you've got clay that looks like stone. You've got stone that can be made to look like clay, mm -hmm. and uh, it's endless possibilities in terms of the, uh, mm -hmm. the aesthetic qualities of it. But masonry is essentially brick block or stone that's used in building construction. So is it fair to say that just about anywhere that someone ends up working or living, whatever building is going to have an, an element of masonry associated with it? Is that, is that pretty well always going to be the case? Yes, you're going to have uh, any, any home that you see when you go to look at the construction of your own home, you'll see some masonry in it. Mm. Uh, it could have a poured foundation, but it could also have a concrete block foundation. Um, it can have uh, block parting walls, uh, dividing walls, fire walls. They're, those are usually made of masonry. Now, if I recall as uh, being a child, the story of the three little pigs. Yes. Some buildings lasted and some buildings fell down. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, if you were telling the three little pigs story with masonry, what would be the... Um, what would be the story? What would be the essence of <laughs> well, that? Well, yeah, we are essentially the brick. So the exterior cladding um, that is made of uh, either clay brick or, or concrete stone or, or stone brick uh, would be masonry. And it withstands 
high winds. It can actually withstand hurricane wow. uh, winds, uh, hurricane force winds, and it's fire resistant as well. Mm -hmm. So it's the durability of masonry buildings is a is a huge part of mm -hmm. what we advocate. Um, you have buildings in neighborhoods that are well over 100 years old, 200 years mm. old, and then you can see the brick and stone still standing. I was recently in Caledon talking to uh, Councillor Alan Thompson there. He was telling me about the hurricane force winds that they had recently had that had mm. blown over some of their siding buildings, mm. their, their metal uh, steel frame buildings, um, and even stucco but the clay brick and the stone buildings were standing and very little damage had been done. Things had been hurled at them, trees had fallen on them, and the damage uh, comparison to those buildings was extremely much lower than the buildings that were made of other materials like vinyl siding. So if I huffed and I puffed, <laughs> I would not be able to blow down no. one of the buildings associated with this product. No masonry stands. Wow, that's uh, extraordinary. Um, brings a whole new dimension to the Three Little Pigs. Yes, it? it does. Um, tell us a little bit about, because you know, one would often not think about the environmental performance of the product, its longevity, uh, perhaps its production as well. Tell us a little bit about some of the environmental issues that are associated mm -hmm. with masonry products. Well, uh, the, the biggest issue that we get asked about mm -hmm. is emissions, because a great deal of our product uh, comes out of a kiln and a kiln uh, requires high temperatures and high temperatures produce emissions. So that is at the plant level. Uh, so a lot of our allies, and some of them are our members, the Cement Association of Canada is a member, mm -hmm. um, they have cement kilns across Ontario, uh, and so emissions at uh, the smokestack are very, uh, very important. So they have worked quite diligently over the last 25 years to reduce emissions and have done so by 25 to 30 percent. That's, that's a huge thing. Uh, the other thing is that in, in masonry products, there is actually a small amount of cement powder that's actually used in the concrete bricks. And that is because uh, cement powder makes up about 10% of the concrete formulation. So if you look at a, a typical um, poured concrete, uh, it's, it's stone, shale, sand, water. Uh, and then a small amount of cement powder. And the cement powder is what creates the emissions. The rest of it is extremely environmentally friendly. It comes from local sources. It comes from uh, sources that are in uh, very good supply. We have plenty of quarries to last us for hundreds of years. So that's a very good story. The other part of it is that uh, clay brick um, does not have emissions issues associated with it from the kiln. It does have emissions in terms of baking the clay, but it's at a much lower temperature than, say, cement is fired at. So the emissions from uh, created by producing clay brick is much lower. Now, there, there's often controversy around quarries and conflicting land uses with farming and, and, and soil issues. How do you deal with some of those issues around the remediation of, uh, do you know how they, those are dealt with around remediation and other issues associated with sites like that? Uh, yes. Uh, most of our members uh, have a plan when they uh, open a quarry or when they've been using a quarry, they have a plan to remediate those quarries and they, in some instances, have made them into parks. Mm. Um, they have reused them for various uh, new land, uh, mm -hmm. land uh, uses. Some, some of them have housing projects on them now. Mm -hmm. They can be refilled, mm -hmm. um, they can be repurposed, uh, and mm -hmm. most of them are. But they have a very long mm -hmm. life use, so you yeah. use a quarry for decades. Well, without quarries and without the products that come from quarries, we wouldn't be able to have urbanization. And urbanization is probably the strongest way we have of countering some of the environmental damage associated with our lifestyles. Yes, and durability of those communities that are being built mm -hmm. is extremely important as well. The more urban intensity that you have, the, the more need you have for durable buildings that will stand the test of time and, and stay standing and look beautiful for a long period of time. People want to live in beautiful communities. They want to live in a community that's not crumbling, um, that is going to be safe and stand. Does, does the product get used in other ways? Uh, does it get used in infrastructure or roads or, or any, uh, is there any other 
areas you could think of that, that the product might be used as well. There are some uh, landscaping applications. Masonry mm -hmm. Works does not uh, have, um, uh, we have members that have landscaping products, mm -hmm. but we don't actually, um, it's not something that Masonry Works advocates. So right. we, we tend to focus on the building construction. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned the fire safety component too of, of the product too. And can you speak to some of the, the ratings associated with the product and mm -hmm. how that you know, makes these safer places for people to live in? Yeah, the, um, the Ontario Building Code requires um, a two-hour firewall uh, in, in new construction buildings. Mm -hmm. And uh, masonry is the uh, best way to mm. achieve that firewall. Mm. And in fact, um, there is no other product that, that can meet its, its standards. And in many cases, masonry can, can divide buildings. Mm for um, a safety of over four hours. So from a, um, a fire protection point of view, this is one of the best things, materials out there for that use. Yes, and in many cases you'll see after the tragedy of a fire, you will, will see that it's the masonry buildings that, or the masonry part of the buildings that mm. are still standing. And in, in many cases, um, I was just at a, a retirement home called mm. Ridgeview, and they were telling me that <clears throat> they had built with, uh, with masonry dividing walls so that uh, they have seniors who at times can right. be slow moving, if, especially if they mm -hmm. need assistance. Mm -hmm. um, and they said that each one of their, the wings of their building is, is divided by masonry mm. um, firewalls so that they can get people into, they, once they pass that firewall, they're safe. Mm. So it's, it's, you can't get that with any other product. You, can't, you can't, certainly can't get that with a wood-framed building. Um, a steel frame a building can, can buckle and under mm -hmm. fire and, and even in some cases melt. Mm. Now what, uh, buying a house or any building is one of the most significant investments pe most people will make in their lifetime. Yes. What, what's the accruing value of these properties? What's, what's the resale value? Well, the, the approximation that we get from builders is that it costs about 2 to 4% more to build a masonry home uh, as opposed to wood, f yeah. wood, wood frame or um, uh, vinyl siding mm -hmm. stucco. Uh, however, the Real Estate Association estimates a 6% um, increase in value of a home that's built with masonry over one that's stucco or vinyl. Now, maybe you could just talk in general terms to your career, uh, the work you observe, people you've worked with over the years. What I'd like you to speak to is kind of the, how the environmental imperative or obligation, however we want to define it, is becoming more and more a part of workplace of just about every job there is regardless of, of its content. Could you talk a little mm -hmm. bit about that? Yeah, everything that we do has to have an environmental component. Every government meeting mm. that I have, mm. they want to see our environmental sheet. So they want to know what lead points can you get with masonry, which is quite extensive. Mm. They, they want to know what's the durability of it. Mm. Uh, they, they want to know um, what sources, is it recyclable, is your, product, you know, is your product from local sources. So it's an extremely important imperative in anything that we do. So every, everybody that we have working for us has to have some level of knowledge of how, what's the sustainability of the product. And that would go from the job site on up to the marketing people like myself um, and the business people and, and the board. One of the first things that the board asked me when I started working for Masonry Works was, uh, what is your level of knowledge in environmental programs? Well, that must have been like a fastball down the center of the plate. <laughs> yes. Um, I, t I trust you knocked that one out of the park? <laughs> yes. Good. I, I'd like yeah. to think so. They, they, they hired me, so that's a good thing. Yeah. That, that is a very good thing. Yeah. It, do you think it's um, a, a, an organization or a company or whatever that has, a, that does attend to the environmental imperative, has a better time attracting better talent to work for them? Uh, would you say that that's a factor in, in all of this as well for companies? I think it absolutely is. We have a number of people who are LEED certified that work in the industry. Maybe you could just describe LEED for those who aren't aware of okay. what it is. Um, yeah, LEED, LEED is a, a building standard and it stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. And it's a standard it, that it's done on a point system. And so with masonry, you can get points for durability, um, and you can get points for uh, 
a moisture control. There's a, there's, a, there's a whole list of lead points that come along with it, and masonry contributes to every one of those, mm. those points. The idea is to build an environmentally friendly building, and uh, I've worked with people who have built platinum lead. So you have the platinum standard and then gold, silver, I think there's a bronze and then just a lead standard, so it goes through different graduations. And I've actually worked from start to finish on LEED standard buildings and it's really quite fascinating how much you have to know, first of all, in terms of what goes into that building and what makes it um, environmental. The maintenance is a huge thing and masonry um, contributes a lot to the maintenance of buildings. For LEED it's, it's largely uh, energy efficiency. So energy efficiency in, in masonry is uh, eight to thirteen percent higher, mm. and and that so that contributes a lot to the uh, to the lead standard points that we can achieve. Mm. Would there be maintenance challenges with masonry products, or does it pretty well look after itself over the years? It's virtually maintenance free, mm. so uh, ideal. Yeah, it is ideal, it, and resists impact. So mm -hmm. even if somebody you know throws a ball against it, or even mm -hmm. you know uh, you, you have uh, issues with high winds and things being hurled at it, mm -hmm. uh, the brick is is largely safe and protected. So it's, uh, it also uh, lowers your energy bills considerably. So, so that helps you with the maintenance of your home as mm -hmm. well. And doesn't need to be painted. And mm -hmm. uh, the, you, know, you, don't, you don't need to um, have it uh, serviced. It's, it's just there and it's protecting your family and it creates a sound mm -hmm. barrier. So it creates quiet neighborhoods, mm -hmm. especially in urban intensification, which is a big thing. So are there any kind of final observations or comments or thoughts you have on either the masonry product itself, the work that you do with the Masonry Works uh, group, uh, or just in general in terms of the environmental imperative and environmental obligation? I think this is a really exciting time to be working in the environmental field, uh, particularly in building and construction. Uh, there is uh, a huge movement to go forward and build, first of all, more energy efficient buildings, but also buildings that will last and look beautiful for a long time. And that's all about learning what the environmental imperative is, what that's going to contribute to building and construction. So I, I would say anyone who wants to work in business, marketing, construction, anything in our industry, mm. you will need some background in environmental work. Well that's great. This has really provided a wonderful overview of, of one particular industry and one field of a multitude of fields and industries in which um, students are graduating in, uh, that we have alumni that are working in a variety of areas. And thanks for providing the insight into this particular field. Well, thank you very much. Yeah.